These baby plants are different though. They were all collected as wild seeds and now they grow in this tree nursery. It's part of the project that Utai works for to help the forest. Two groups called Children's Tropical Forests and BirdLife International raise money for them because it's really important to save Keo Noi Chuchi. The little trees Surat is taking care of will one day be planted at the edge of the forest to make it bigger and provide food or a home for the animals. You'd probably like to turn the sound down on this particular forest animal. It's a cicada. There's millions of them and they really are deafening. All the plants are useful to people. These will make valuable timber and these salakas grow sweet fruit. You should watch out, you'll get sprinkled. Maybe you enjoy it. Those plants behind the lizard will one day grow canes you can make chairs from. People can collect the seedlings to plant near their homes, which helps the forest spread out. This man's come to ask about Salak. He's also interested in these. They're called Parkia javanica. They'll grow up into tall trees that produce a lot of beans called riang. One day, you'll be able to collect the beans to eat or to sell. This is a grown-up Parkia javanica tree. The beans are inside the green pods hanging down. And these are the actual Riang beans. Before you can eat them, they have to sprout, so you plant them and water them for a few days, and then it's off to the market. In Thailand there are markets everywhere, and you can buy almost anything you want. Thai food is delicious. It often has juice from these in it. They're limes and they make it sharp and to make it hot they use these chili peppers. And here are the riang. Mm, just enough for lunch. So, here's how to cook a riang bean curry. First, heat your wok over a hot charcoal stove. Then, pour in some oil. Add a bowl of riang beans to a lot of chopped chilies, some curry and a bit of meat. Stir for a while and serve hot. Very, very hot. In fact, it's just about hot enough to set fire to your tongue. Oh, oh, oh. But it is delicious. But there's plenty more to find in the forest than just things to eat. These people are looking for birds. Nowadays, more and more people are coming to Khao Nai Chuchi to watch its wildlife. And this is good because it means that there are more and more people who want the forest to be there. This is a ruby-throated sunbird feeding high up in the trees. The bird they'd most like to see is one of the rarest in the world and it's one of the hardest to find. And that's because it lives down on the ground in this tangle and it's very secretive. You have to go quietly and you listen for its footsteps. I can hear them, I can see it, I'm sure I saw something there. It's in there. There it is. Out on the path. Now this is called Gurney's Pitta. And that's the male. The Gurney's Pitter is now so rare that it only lives in Khao Noi Chuchi and there are probably less than 50 of them left in the world. And that's the female, with chicks to feed. There's the male again with that shiny head. They sometimes call them jewel thrushes. Nice name, that. These are very special birds and now they're so famous you can even see one in a petrol station. Maybe they give them away every 10 gallons you buy or something. If it was that big, it'd be easy to see, wouldn't they? They've got their own road sign, and artists make paintings of them on cloth that are called batiks. But what is it that's made the Gurney's Pitta so rare? when it has such good forest to live in.
The truth is that all around Khao Nai Chuchi, the trees have been cut down and burned, so there's almost nowhere left for the pitters and other animals to live. Instead, people are going to plant coffee and rubber trees. And in the little forest that is left, some people still make traps, like this one that Surat's discovered. They'll eat or sell the animals they catch in them. He's setting it off so that nothing will get caught. And that could have been a Gurney's pitter. <laughs>